Hey everyone, Kaijin Kumba here. Now, if you recall my last video, I actually did a collab video with Joey the Anime Man over on his channel and came to find out that it was sponsored by this game called Own Myoji. Basically, it's a turn-based RPG where you can summon dozens of different monsters, or Shikigami in this case, and have them fight for you. You can even summon them through AR, which I admit's pretty neat. But for us, the big hook was the name of the game, Own Myoji. This was the name for 7th century Japanese astrologers and court wizards who told fortunes, managed the lunar calendar, could see into the realm of spirits and monsters, and even summoned them to do their bidding. And you know us, utter the words Japanese mythology and we go into a feeding frenzy. So with great curiosity and a few requests from some of you guys, I picked up Own Milji on Facebook Game Room and Google Play to see if it was really worth all the awards it won, like Facebook's 2016 Game of the Year award and Google Play's Best of 2017. Would have gotten on Steam, but it's not available yet. Links to the game in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, by the way. I mean, it's been downloaded over 200 million times worldwide, so it had to at least be decent. And after two hours with the game, I was speechless. You know how a lot of games I talk about on my show only use some culture and history in their game design? This game uses literally everything that makes up Heian Piri Japanese Om Myoji, and I mean everything. So after talking with the creators, NetEase Games, and showing them what I do on my channel, they asked me to do a sponsored video talking about Own Myoji. Aside from all the amazing characters and concepts they pull literally right out of history and folklore, I was legit impressed at how much care went into this mobile game. The models are sharp, the animation's fluid, you get an adjustable 3D field of view with combat, and can I just say that some of the voice talent behind this game, a mobile game no less, has a solid gold industry pedigree. Noriaki Sugiyama, voice of Sasuke Uchiha, Rie Kugimiya, voice of Alphonse from Full Metal Alchemist, and Jun Fukuyama, voice of freaking Lelouch in Code Geass. <笑>何も信じずただ暴れていたわしに死んだいというものを教えてくれた者がいたごめんねずっとそばにいるって約束守ってあげられなくていいの <laughs> well, good graphics and voice acting is nice, but that's not exactly what brought people here. We gotta get into the culture of this game. Alright, alright, alright. Let me backpedal a bit and explain in a bit more detail who these wizards were. Back in the Heian period, oh, around 7th century BCE or so, these lavishly dressed courtsmen were known as On Myoji, named so for their practice of On Myodo, or Way of Yin and Yang. And as you might expect from the meaning of that name, Omiyoji lifted a lot of practices right out of China. The cosmology for the North, South, East, and West gods, the 12 animals of the zodiac, even concepts like the ever-changing good and bad luck directions were taken from China and integrated into Japan with a little mix of Buddhism, Confucianism, and Shinto. In court, Omiyoji were responsible for a whole host of things. For one, they were responsible for keeping the calendar. Remember, this was back in a time before the 12-month system that we and much of the world share ever existed. They were also responsible for divination. By observing nature both cosmic and local, they predicted natural disasters, as well as deciphering fortunate and unfortunate directions which were based off of time of year and time of day. You may laugh, but if one of these guys said going south spelled misfortune and south is where you lived, people at this time would rather sleep at their work until that misfortune passed than risk it. But that's the boring stuff. The coolest thing about Omyoji and what makes up the majority of the game we're looking into of the same name was their ability to summon spirits and monsters called Shikigami to do their bidding. In a very real way, Omyoji were Japan's first Pokemon masters. I guess when you put it that way. Omyoji were believed to have a second sight into the world of spirits, demons, and the dead. Because of this, they were the ones responsible for warding out evil in the human world but they were also believed to be able to summon a plethora of yokai and spirits from the other world to do their bidding. But the Omyoji needed a tool, a conduit in which to interact with the spirit world. This was known as the Ofuda Talisman. While Ofuda were little more than washi paper inscribed with various symbols or a message in kanji, they evoked the power of the other world to banish evil and summon spirits. In modern day, Ofuda cards are placed on doors, walls, even ceilings, and have a wide range of uses. From putting one in your kitchen to prevent house fires, to pinning them in areas of supernatural activity in hopes of warding away ne'er-do-well spirits. As for summoning spirits, while it's a far more esoteric process really only known to other Omyoji, it's believed that they used some kind of Ofuda while simultaneously chanting to invoke the presence of different spirits and yokai from the other world and then bind them to their will. Like we said, they're Japan's first Pokemon masters. Though instead of high-tech, light-manipulating Pokeballs, they etch pieces of paper and chant. 
both of which you do in-game. That's right. In-game, in order to summon a new spirit or monster to join the ranks of your team, you either chant to the mic or draw on the Ulfida on the screen. And after a brief moment, out comes your new monster servant ready to beat the ever-loving crap out of your enemies. Wait, what's with the pentagram? I get Omyoji dabbled in the occult, but... Well, this pentagram doesn't exactly have the same kind of symbolism. This particular star, which is known as the Seibon, represents the interconnections of the Taoist Five Elements. Earth, fire, water, wood, and metal. And the personal seal of one of the greatest Omyoji to have ever lived, Abe no Seime. Uh, isn't that also the name of Omyoji's protagonist? Yeah, that's the whole point. Like I said before, this game may seem like a simple turn-based mobile RPG, but it's completely built from everything that the Omyoji were, which is why I've been bugging out so hard about it. In life, Seimei worked as any other Omyoji worked in the court, acting as an astrologer, predicting natural events, divining locations of unknown objects, making calendars, warding off evil spirits, and acting as a spiritual guide for other members of government. He even wrote quite a few books in his lifetime, like the Senji Daketsu, which holds 36 forms of fortune-telling techniques using Shikigami. Sounds like a Japanese Merlin to me. Pretty much, though the edge that Seimei has to Merlin is that his existence is undisputed. But it was only after his death that the rumors about the man made him into a legend. Abe no Seimei lived from 921 to 1005 BCE, an unusually long lifespan for someone of that era. Because of this, whispers spread around that his spiritual capabilities actually extended his mortality. Rumors also spread that due to his long life and early proficiency with Omyodo, he was actually birthed from a man and a female kitsune named Kuzunoha. Due to his half-yokai lineage, it was believed that Seimei was able to command Oni and yokai as early as the age of five, and without the need of Ofura or any other device. Take that, Ketchum! But the stories didn't end there. There was also talk about his longtime rivalry with another Omyoji, Ashia Domen, as Domen always made an attempt to usurp Seimei's position. In a divination duel to determine the contents of a box between the two, Doman actually paid off a court member to put 15 oranges in the box and with confidence claimed that he saw the 15 oranges. Clever Seimei though saw through Doman's trick and transformed the oranges into mice and stated that 15 rodents were in the box. And when the box was open, Seimei was victorious and Doman was shamed. Upon his death in 1005, the Emperor had Seimei's soul elevated to the status of Kami and had Seimei's shrine built over his home which still stands to this day in Kyoto. But even in modern times, Abe no Seimei's legacy continues to live on. Not only does Omyoji utilize Seimei's legend, but so do other games in anime like Drifters, Twin Star Exorcist, Warriors Orochi, the list goes on. Either way, Omyoji and the concept of Omyoto was something that I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time now, but didn't have much of a vehicle to do it in. So let me say thanks just one more time to NetEase Games for sponsoring this video, and again, if you want to check out this free-to-play game for yourself, I've got plenty of links in the description. They got a special event going on between now and March 4th called Come On My SSR. After 100 yokai summons, you're guaranteed an SS rank monster. I'm still going to be playing this game long after this video, so I encourage you guys to have a look as well. But either way, thanks for watching everyone. If you missed my Witch Ninja video I did with Joey the Anime Man on Zero, be sure to check that out too. Thanks to my patrons, I was able to utilize some new sprites and animations that were a ton of fun to put together. Otherwise guys, I hope you subscribe to never miss out on my newest cultural videos, and until next time, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.